I'm Cynthia McFadden. Tonight, the Genius School. We hear a lot about improving the nation's schools for kids who are falling behind, helping struggling students learn to read and improve basic math skills. President Bush's education initiative, after all, is called No Child Left Behind. But what about the children that are left way out ahead? Is public education failing students at the top of the academic heap? One wealthy couple is on a mission to change the way at least a small group of very smart kids are educated. Nightline's John Donvan reports. Growing up in tiny Columbus, Montana, population not quite 1,800 people, Emma Schmelzer was, everyone agreed, smart, above average, a very good student. But then, as her dad recalls it, then something went wrong. She'd lost some of her interest in school. She was just kind of floating along. and that you, you could see the light kind of going out of her eyes. And that wasn't good for anybody. It was high school where it happened, and it's not that Emma suddenly couldn't keep up. It's that she was too far out in front. She'd already skipped two grades, and now school was so easy for her that going every day seemed practically pointless. Were they, you know, making it challenging enough for you? No. <laughs> no. I mean, I mean, just flat out no. Yeah. They, I mean, they were trying, but it just got to the point where it wasn't enough. I just moved from a small town in Montana to the biggest little city in the world. And so Emma and her family uprooted themselves and got to Reno, Nevada, as did a couple dozen other families from around the nation, where last August they launched themselves as the inaugural class of 35 students at a brand new public school designed for the smartest of the smart. I do not profess to know everything about anything, but I do expect to be able to learn anything about everything. The brightest of the bright. I was in the eighth grade at a local school and had exhausted almost all the possible options for high school. The keenest of the keen. Now everyone can go to school and think, yes, I get to learn something today, instead of, oh no, not boring old school again. Instead, school is this, 11-year-olds taking third and fourth year high school algebra, or Chinese. This is respecting the ancestors. 12-year-olds like reading deeply into Eastern civilization, 14-year-olds doing honors biology, or hopping a shuttle bus to courses at the University of Nevada in Reno on whose campus the school is located. If it was across Why, like, that... Okay, let's draw that line in. I like, I like the way you guys think. <laughs> Not gifted students, but <laughs> profoundly gifted. That's the term used for these kids by the school itself. It is called the Davidson Academy. And these are the founders and the primary funders, Jan and Bob Davidson. And these are the kids in the last one-tenth of one percent. Uh, an ability level as, as high, basically as high as it can be reasonably measured. Approximately one out of 20 or 25,000 births. So it's a little more rare than gifted. Without putting too fine a point on this, it, it, it appears to us that um, the children we serve are approximately 160 or above an IQ. The Davidsons, for their part, are wealthy. You could say profoundly wealthy. You've both done very, very well in life, in business, and in education, and yet I, neither of you is sitting here saying that either of you is profoundly gifted. Oh, we aren't. <laughs> Bob, a retired businessman now, and Jan, a former educator, they got out in front in the 1980s with a software program called Math Blaster, first of a series of educational programs that were massive bestsellers. The academy at this point is two classrooms on the back side of a campus building with plans to grow. Recess will not always be in the parking lot. A public school, it is funded both by the state and by the Davidsons, who were driven by their concern, as they argued in a book called Genius Denied, that schools in America are underserving the very brightest. Remember when we were a 10th grader and what would have happened if we were forced to, to be in 5th grade? Uh, to, to sit in fifth grade. I mean, that would have been very hard for us to take. And so now you get a little bit of an understanding um, how difficult it is for these children to intellectually be at a much, much higher level than their grade level and to, to, to be interested in what's being presented to them because they've already learned it. As a result of being under-challenged, many of our nation's brightest students are either tuning out or dropping out. Jan speaks of the profoundly gifted as special needs students. Well, this is population that's not getting any accommodation for their special needs. And what would happen to that kid? They could become frustrated, they could agree, 
Uh, they could uh, opt out, they could become bored, uh, act out. Um, it depends on the child, but it's not a good thing. Uh, we know that. Take Emma again, who at 14 has already written one novel, started one school newspaper, and is now handling a college-level course in comparative religions. May well derive from the old Hebrew term for God, El. Her parents say that her old public school back in Montana just didn't have the resources to tailor a program to a child as outside the mainstream as she was intellectually. The resources in small rural schools tend to go towards sports and uh, uh, 